You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible Ephesians 5, 21 and 22 and those Sydney Anglicans A comment I made in an aside about the Sydney Anglicans in a recent uh, podcast provoked a storm of comment and it's true I was unfair to the Sydney Anglicans they're not pagans they are mistaken in their reading of scripture and they don't seem to have read scripture carefully enough looking at Ephesians chapter 5 verses 21 and 22 the Sydney Anglicans seem to want to separate the two verses and so they encourage women to promise to submit to their husbands but don't encourage the reverse a friend pointed me to Martin Lloyd-Jones sermons on this passage I don't have the book and only the openings available on Amazon and the nearest library with the book is three hours away but Lloyd-Jones opening is magnificent he rightly points out that we need to understand how Paul works and that he exposes the great doctrines of the Christian faith incomparably but that he does it in ways that work out and show us the implication of those doctrines the result of this Lloyd-Jones writes is that he never approaches any practical problem in Christian living immediately or directly he always does so in a doctrinal manner he places every problem into the context of the whole body of Christian truth so we find here that when he comes to deal with the problems of the Christian in his married and family life and in his work he does so by reminding us that the Christian life is a life in the spirit so agreeing with Lloyd-Jones verse 22 must be read in the light of the theological principles that were introduced earlier in the passage these are two the general one don't live lives of excess and drunkenness but be spirit filled in verses 18 to 20 and making this more specific this doesn't just mean worship as Paul's just explained but also mutual submission in verses 21 and following in terms of the syntax how the words phrases and clauses work together in this passage literal English would look like one huge sentence that ran from verse 18 rather like this don't get drunk on wine in which is debauchery but be filled with the spirit speaking to one another with psalms hymns and spiritual songs singing and making music in your heart to the Lord always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ wives to your husbands as to the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church his body of which he is the Savior now as the church submits to Christ so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything and then finally in verse 25 unless we count the parenthesis in verses 23 to 24 a new sentence starts husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it what this makes clear as English translations from Tyndale onwards have not made clear is that there is no new sentence starting at verse 22 indeed verse 22 doesn't have a verb wives to your husbands as to the Lord wives what to your husbands as to the Lord the only place to get submit is from verse 21 the two verses simply cannot be read separately wives to your husbands as to the Lord can only be read as part of submitting yourselves to one another in fear of God wives to your husbands as to the Lord the bullet points that I've got in the visual version of it I think help to make the English a bit clearer and make it work as 21st century English in a way that the long sentence wouldn't in older forms of English so to take up a point made by a commentator on Facebook your interpretation of Ephesians 5 on marriage is debatable he wrote just about no church father in the first 1500 years of the church interpreted in the context you have or had a problem with it I can list them I've done the historical study now I'm not as widely read as this commentator claimed to be but which would you rather follow even assuming that he's right and that most of the church fathers up for the first 1500 years did manage to separate the two verses which would you rather follow the plain grammatical sense of an apostle who here as in this whole passage and often elsewhere is busy turning cultural expectations of his day on their head in the name of the gospel and whose words are scripture including their grammar and construction or would you rather believe the interpretations of no matter what majority of readers across the centuries whose readings simply confirm their cultural prejudices I know who I would rather follow so if I'm leading a marriage service and someone's going to promise to submit it had better be both parties 
that's scriptural. I've not dealt with the currently vexed topic of headship in this podcast, because that requires at least another five minutes. But I do have a podcast on that topic. So, why don't you listen to that one, too? Double the fun. Bye for now.